We begin this week on a launch pad at Florida's Cape Canaveral. From there, a SpaceX rocket carried the intuitive machine's Athena lunar lander. Its mission, to safely deliver this cargo close to the moon's south pole. If all goes according to plan, Athena will hop into an estimated 20 meters deep pitch black crater using German and Hungarian instruments to hunt for frozen water. Athena is scheduled to land on March 6th. Elsewhere in our solar system, a new discovery about Mars and the rusty red minerals that make it the red planet. This latest research, which has been conducted through uh, a combination of observations from uh, European and American orbiters and, uh, and landers, um, really shows that the, the kind of rust you get on, on Mars is much more similar to the rust which we are familiar with on Earth, which is not just dry oxidized iron, but actually has uh, a significant water content as well. Scientists published their findings in the Nature Communications Journal, and they say new research explains how the planet's color became so completely red. So now we know that they trusted when there was liquid water present, and also there must have been some sort of uh, form of oxygen also, maybe from the water or from the air or from other sources that helps the rusting uh, process. Researchers say winds likely blew this rusted dust all over the planet, but without rainfall to wash it away, it just sits there as we see it today. And the discovery only leads to more questions. The scientists are still trying to figure out how warm it would have been. I mean, it must have been warm enough to sustain liquid water on the surface. Every little clue like this uh, about where different minerals could have formed uh, does get us closer to understanding what that past might have looked like. Scientists say missions to Mars become more likely if there's water there to support crews and to make rocket fuel for the trip home. Finally this week, our solar system is treating us to a phenomenon called a planetary parade where the planets appear to line up in the sky. So what's awesome about trying to look for planets in the sky is that actually quite a few of them are visible to the naked eye. So you don't need any tools, no binoculars or telescopes. So if you want to look for the naked eye planets, as we call them, uh, then Venus and Saturn over in the western part of the sky, they'll be visible to the eye. And then you should be able to spot Jupiter and Mars further over to the east. Uh, Venus and Jupiter typically are the brightest ones. The parade should be visible in clear skies shortly after sunset. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.